What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode number 33 of The Climb here with Luzanak and today we're going to be taking on Red Star in League Ur. Uh, yes, in League Ur, uh, last time I left you we were causing cup upsets and let me tell you now, the cup upsets didn't continue. In fact, we didn't even lose to a team that you'd say that we necessarily should be losing to in the French Cup. That's very unfortunate. But yes, we've played about two months, as you can see, since you were last here, of course. Last episode, we took on Toulouse, and before we get into these results, it was January last time we were here, and I've got busy in the market. I've got frisky in the market. What does that even mean? I don't know. Um, we made one sale since you were last year. It's Stephanie Zobo going to Red Star, who we play today. It will probably be quite typical if he comes on off the bench to score against us, but ultimately, Zobo, we brought in on a freebie a few years ago. It really didn't set the world alight with his goal scoring record in the last season or two and ultimately he was going to leave at the end of the season on a free he wasn't playing for us uh, cashed in a very small amount of money for him but money nevertheless and we don't have to worry about his wages meanwhile on the ends we did continue to bring in players of course we talked about the likes of Diego Costa um, as you can see looking here we signed four players uh, in the remainder of the window the first of which was Gwendal Mercia who is a left footed centre back from Socho I absolutely love the look of this guy really really good centre back last year our defence was so incredibly strong and I don't feel like it's really maintained itself. Of course, we looked to replace uh, Hugo Robert with Garo here at left kind of centre back, but it didn't really, I don't want to say it didn't work out, but he hasn't been wowing me. Put it that way. Like, his ratings have been pretty good, but defensively, we've not kept clean sheets with him in our ranks. And ultimately, uh, Mercier here is a similar age, about a year younger, um, but you can just see looking at the head to head comparison is just. A little more well-rounded, I suppose. A little bit better in the air, a little more physical. Um, ultimately, I think they're both going to be very, very good centre-backs. And In fact, over the course of this January transfer window, I have been trying to, I don't want to say fix the defence, because you can't really fix a defence in January. But you can see, just looking through here, I think we had something like six clean sheets in the first half of the season, which, when you compare that to the previous year... Just really isn't good enough. So yes, Mercier joins us. He's 18 years old. Signed for a bargain price. We agreed to sign him at the end of his contract and then exercised a buy now clause. As you can see, four games played for us. He's already got a goal as well. Um, that is not the only defender though we've signed since you were last here. Of course, Mercier's come in. Vidmar's come in. He is a uh, Slovenian. Um, under 21 international. Generated as a free agent. Will he turn out to be amazing? I'm not sure. I mean, he's very quick. He's quite good going forward. I feel like defensively, he's got a long way to improve his game. But ultimately, he's a free transfer, so it's such a low-risk move. Hopefully, he can turn into something a little bit special. Whether or not that really happens, I suppose, remains to be seen. Anyway, the next pair we signed, perhaps the bargain of the season. I'm going to say it, the bargain of the season. Saidi signed from SM Khan, who, of course, are second in our league. And, uh, well, Saidi here is uh, a player we've got for a ridiculous cut price uh, again similar to Mercia we agreed to sign him at the end of his contract I ended up going through all the teams in our league just to see what young players they had with contracts expiring and uh, Mustafa was one such player and I mean look at him at 17 years old he is incredible now he's naturally a centre attack in mid um, he hasn't really got the finishing I don't think to play going forward defensively he's not exactly outstanding so, uh, in terms of where I see him slotting into the team, I think he could be a really good box-to-box -box midfielder longer term. Uh, really well-rounded. He's got super good mentals for his age. Extremely technical. He doesn't really shine going forward or defensively. Um, for that reason, I don't think it's worth playing a role that tailors to either. Instead, let's just try and make him as well-rounded as possible. But yes, yeah, 17 years old. Signed for £8,000. Two appearances already, both on off the bench. Um, a player who is kind of signed for the future, but at the same time, I want to give some game time to because he looks looks really really good anyway the final signing we've made one of the biggest signings we've made in recent memory in terms of fee played it is edgar sandy i'll let you know what I'll, I'll, I'll just leave it here and let you decide your opinion on edgar sandy um now he is unfortunately suspended for today's match he's played four games for us and got three yellow cards but he is a costa rican international at the age of 18 with a perfectionist personality um we had one non-eu player spot that we could fill up and i was just scrolling through the teams and this guy popped up he was the youngest player in the costa rica national team he had some okay numbers at kind of you know costa rican club level we brought him in here for eighty-five thousand pounds which is absolutely nothing really um and at the moment you know he's putting some good performances in his first four games 
Obviously, um, with the centre-back position, Hal Hal has been an ever-present part of our team, but I can't renew his loan. Um, the club that he's on loan from, Montpellier, just aren't interested in loaning him back out. So I'm already trying to plan for life without Hal Hal. Um, and I feel I feel like what we've done, actually, with the signings of Sandy and of Mercier is kind of covered our, ba uh, covered our backs, really. Uh, I think that both these guys could be the long-term centre-back players for us. Both 18 years old, both extremely young. Um, I think Sandy obviously is a little bit better right now. It is worth noting that with Sandy, he did have a few cons that I'm not massively a fan of. Um, I think inconsistency and unadaptable were two of them. Um, of course, when you sign a player, some of the cons just don't get passed to your coaches. So you may see those appear. I'm not going to be shocked and horrified if I see them. But if you ignore the pros and cons and just look at him as an actual player... For less than £100,000, he's absolutely incredible. So I've got high hopes for Sandy. Whether or not he can live up to those hopes, I suppose, remains to be seen. You can see here, this year, we've uh, we've signed £325,000 worth of players. We've made it almost £2 million selling players, which is... Well, it's not too bad, really. And Kahinde, I very nearly... I say I nearly sold. I didn't really nearly sell him. Um, we had an offer of close to a million pounds come in from... I think it was Marseille for him. Um, the board didn't intervene. They said, nope, we're not selling him for a million pounds. I think it was about 925k. So I was quite relieved about that. Uh, his contract, of course, expires at the end of next year. So I have kind of got a plan ahead to either get him a new contract, which I'm a little bit scared to imagine what he might ask for, or alternatively, we look to sell him in the summer. But Kahinde has been such a huge part of our team. I didn't really, in the end, want to ever consider selling him this January. Because at the moment, despite the, the patchy form over the last few months... As of late, we've kind of got back on track, which is really, really important for us. And uh, while talking about getting back on track, let's talk about the game, shall we? So, of course, last episode we took on to lose. What an upset that was. was desperately hoping that could give us some momentum, and it certainly did. Going into the first game against Le Mans, um, we were taking on a team who, of course, were promoted with us last year. And, in fact, they took the lead in this game through Christopher Richard. Uh, and then Kofi came alive. Yes, away from home, we mounted a comeback. The first goal, a quite nice one by Kofi. Uh, the second goal, Sip and David, I was horrified because I thought he was offside as he bundled the ball across the line. I was waiting for the Lions' flag to go up. It didn't. Kofi was awarded the assist. He's probably going to be livid that his goal was st stolen. But ultimately, three points. And we needed a few runs of kind of wins here. And that's kind of what we've done. Anyway, the very next game was against Lorient. It was in the French Cup, taking on a team in our own division. It wasn't the super sexy French Cup fixture I was imagining. And we lost it 3-2 after extra time. And a 116th minute goal was the killer uh, in this game. If we just look at the match stats, it was a pretty even game. I think we were fortunate perhaps to take it to extra time. Blaze and Kofi were getting the goals for us, but... The better team kind of won on the night. And like I said last time, you know, the French Cup, it'd be nice to go on a good run in it. But ultimately, I, I want to try and maintain our playoff spot. And that is something that we've certainly made big steps towards doing uh, as of late. Anyway, the next game we had was against Chateau We won this one 2-1. Julian Blaze with an incredible goal within the first minute of this game. Just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, they did fight back and get a goal just after half time. They had a sending off, though, in the 23rd minute. I kind of went for the killer blow then, and I think that maybe left us a little exposed at the back. The good news was, despite going, uh, well, getting pulled back even, Fomba was lurking at the back post. He bundled a ball over the line from a corner. And we won this game 2-1. Not the most convincing of results, particularly because they had 10 men for 17 minutes. But ultimately, a win is a win. And I was hoping that that midweek fixture was going to build up some momentum going into the game against Cannes. And, uh, well, it didn't. It simply put. Um, of course, the Cannes are in second in the league. So this was a good chance for us to close the gap on the automatic promotion spots. Although, at this point, we found ourselves quite far behind them. Um, but ultimately, they won 2-0. It was a close game. We had the better clear-cut chances. They had more half chances. I think 2-0 flattered them a little bit. They were pretty clinical. Both goals coming in the first half. We just didn't really get going. And as my grandma likes to say, if you can't score a goal, you can't win a game. And, well, we didn't, didn't score, so I can't really make a claim that we deserve to win this game. The good news is that in the month of February, following on from that defeat, we are currently unbeaten. And we got a few clean sheets as well. Yes, the shuffling of the defence worked wonders. Against New York, we won 3-0. You can see here Sandy and Mercia playing at centre-back with Billingy and Russo at left-back and right-back. Kahinde got man of the match in this game. He got a goal and an assist. Blaze and Kofi just doing their thing. Blaze and Kofi just get all the goals for us. I don't want to say we're overly, overly reliant on two players, but... We are quite reliant on them. It's kind of funny because they both have 10 finishing. They're, they're, both, they're not particularly great finishes, and yet uh, Kofi has 14 goals this season. 
and Blaise has nine. They are just getting all the goals in the league for us. Who needs a star striker when you've got those two? I'll tell you who needs them. The team who took on Harvey in the very next game because it finished nil-nil. So that's a little bit rich, isn't it? But another clean sheet. Defensively, we, we, we were good. That's the main thing. And most recently, we took on Sean Blay, which we won 3-2. This was a bit of a crazy game, to be honest. Uh, Kofi got us off to a flyer with the opening goal of the game after 15 minutes. But they replied twice within the next four minutes. It was nuts. It was absolutely bananas. Sean Blay, a team who are lurking right down there at the bottom of the league. We should be beating them. If we want to be getting promoted this year, we have to win this kind of game, essentially. They were 2-1 up at the break. Uh, I got shouty shouty at them, and then Kofi missed a penalty. Yeah, that was a thing. Um, the good news is that Kofi got a goal in the 63rd minute, just three minutes later, bounced back. That mental fortitude. And in fact, he did go on to get player of the match in this game, despite missing the penalty. And then later on, Gwendal Mercier, the youngster, joining us from Socho, grabbed the winner, a header at the near post, channeling his inner Hugo Robert. Um, of course, he is a bit better in the air than other options we've had. He's got 15 jumping reach and 11 heading. Maybe he's the next Hugo Robert. That's what I want to believe. But he got the goal in this one. He got us the win. And, uh, well, looking just at this run of results, just as an overview... We're finally getting our groove again, I think. Some clean sheets were nice. You know, the, the signings have worked in terms of just, I guess, sorting things out a little. As I mentioned, unfortunately, um, we've got a suspension today with Sandy, so Hal Hal is going to come back in. But in terms of planning for life without Hal Hal, we've got really good centre-backs now. We've got really, really good centre-backs. Of course, we've got Sandy the Costa Rican. We've got... Um, Garou, who we signed at the start of the year, who's put in some good performances, to be honest, has a little bit of potential to improve. And behind them, we've still got the likes of Christopher Payet, a player who's improved a lot over recent years. We signed him from Bezier at the start of last season as a freebie. And I didn't really realise how much he's improved. He looks like he could be a pretty good fourth-choice centre-back for us if we're still in this division next year. Um, yeah, I really do like... He's, he's, it's one of those ones where I've checked the under-20s and just gone, oh my word, we have this guy playing for us. I'm sure you've been in that situation where a youngster's just improved ridiculously. Pae has been that man. Of course, Hugo Robert still lurking in the team as the backup of all backups. Um, he's not played immense when we played him this year, to be fair to him. Anyway, just to have a quick look at the league table. This is how things look right now. With 13 games left of the season, uh, we are two points behind Socio. We are level on points with Lorient, who knocked us out the French Cup. Dijon are now down in sixth. And Auxerre, well, they have fallen way, way, way off the pace. I mean, look at that form. They've drawn four of their last five games and lost the other. It is worth noting with the playoffs, a bit of a unique format here in France. So the way it works is fourth plays fifth. Then the winner of that game plays third. And then the winner of the third versus, you know, the winner of this game. They then play the playoff final, essentially, against the team who finished third from bottom in Ligue 1. So at the moment, that would be Angers. Um, Toulouse are down there. I, I will happily, we've beaten them. We could do it again. I would not be mad to play Toulouse. Um, but yeah, it's a bit of a unique format. So actually, it's not one of those situations where we go, yeah, we're in the playoff. This is great. Realistically, I want to be finishing as high as we can. Third would be a really big difference maker. We're going to be looking to hunt down so show. Now, today we take on Red Star, who are down in 15th. And the reason I chose to do this game is because I think it's going to be a good chance to see how much we've progressed. Because at the start of the season, we started immensely. And then our very first defeat of the season was against Red Star. So today we've got a chance to make amends, to fight off our demons. And then following on from this game, you can see here we've got the likes of Twa, uh, VAFC, Ajaccio. Dijon in 6th is going to be quite a big game. I think Gungam, I think Lorient in 5th will probably be next episode's game. And then that sets us up nicely for potentially a huge game to end the season against Socho in the league. Anyway, we're going to get into this game. Uh, in terms of team selection, besides the suspension to Sandy, we are in a pretty good spot. Um, I've kind of settled on a, a midfield at this point. It's taken a little while, but this is the midfield I've been going with. Um, it's kind of been a weird blessing in dis disguise because Bavarel was causing me some headaches because he was complaining about lack of first team football and wanting to play. With him gone, so much less of a concern. Also, just to quickly comp uh, compare Saidi, the guy we just signed, um, you can see here, to Bavarel. I mean, who would you rather have in your team? I'm going to leave it up. They're kind of slightly different players, but I feel like considering we saw Bavarel for half a million pounds, to get Mustafa Saidi from Cannes on a freebie where we're kind of exercising a buy now option having agreed a pre-contract, I think we've done really bloody well, <laughs> if I might say so myself. And in fact, Saidi is good enough for a spot, a spot on the bench in our team. But yeah, as I said, the midfield is kind of settled now. Big Dub 
has uh, been pretty good as of late. He's had a, maybe a little bit of a quiet run, to be fair to him, but his numbers overall in the league have been beyond solid. Um, elsewhere, the striking department is still the kind of big question mark, really. You know, I've played Kofi up there. I've played Cyprian David up there. Nuno Cruz. I've seen the Nuno Cruz co fan club in the comment section saying, you've got to give Nuno more games. I've given him a lot of chances. And to be fair, in the league, he's done okay, but... Uh, sorry, up top he's done okay. In the league he's done kind of meh. But the reality is I signed him to be a utility man. Nuno Cruz was never signed really to be a starter. He was always going to be kind of a bit of a Swiss army knife of a player. And well, one goal and one assist in seven starts and ten sub appearances is pretty... I don't want to say rubbish. I can think of stronger words I'd like to use, but YouTube won't like it if I do them, nor will my mother. He's just, he's not very good. Um, I am going to start Diego Costa up front. He's been out with the hernia injury, injury for a while. Kind of don't really know what that's going to have done to him. He only played, um, well, the, the one game before he got injured. He's come off on the bench a few times, and he's not had the big impacts, but it can be difficult for players, especially older players, to come on off the bench to have an impact. I think if you're a faster player, you know, coming on against hiring legs almost gives you an advantage, whereas that doesn't really exist. Meanwhile, at the back, we're going to go with this. Thomas, of course, has renewed his loan, as I mentioned last episode, till the end of next year, which is fantastic news. Zangaba has continued to keep Billingley out of the team, although, again, I have been rotating things quite a lot at the back. Um, it's one of those situations where I would like to have a settled back for, but Due to suspensions and just, I guess, me fiddling, I've kind of not really been able to find that established 11. Russo at left-back still holds down a spot. I had been giving NDIA a little run at left-back, but he's not performed very well. Elsewhere at centre-back, it's going to be uh, an appearance for Mercier. Let's see what he can do. He's got a big future ahead of him. It's his live comp debut. The pressure is on him. He scored just last game. What can he do today? That's the real question. Anyway, against Red Star, this is a game we should be winning quite comfortably. Hopefully this can be a little bit of a confidence builder for the likes of Diego Costa. Maybe he can get a goal or two. And, uh, well, a win here would really help us out. Of course, you might have seen in the league, we are four points in the playoffs now. So that's kind of what we're holding on to, I feel like, at this point. If we just look at the league table. Um, we want to extend the gap over Dijon if we can. I would like to try and hunt down Can, although they're eight points ahead of us. It feels a little unrealistic to be even considering that right now. It's definitely not an unassailable gap, but they've not really been dropping points, and we would have to go on a really good run of form. And to be fair, the last month's been a pretty good kind of reason for optimism, I feel like, with our team. We've done reasonably well. If we can keep it going, um, I could see us really making, or well, hopefully a late charge up the league, but ultimately just cementing a comfortable playoff spot would be in my interest. Anyway, Zangaba goes short to Kahinde, who goes back to Zangaba. They've got their little link-up play going on here. Diego Costa gives away the ball horrifically. Diego, what are you doing, son? What are you doing? Catherine through, Catherine through. Can they finish? Thomas, get up. They can finish at the second time of asking. What a weird goal. I mean, the dribbling by Eric Catherine here, that's not how you say his name, I'm going to just call him Catherine, was pretty tasty, to be fair. And he is very, very quick. But Diego Costa's been caught napping. He has been caught napping. We've taken a deep free kick short. We've sent up our centre-backs for the set piece. And then, well, they've broken away like that. And Thomas dives once. He dives again. He just can't get there. The rebound off the post was kind to Red Star. And they take the lead in this game. And just as I'm talking about the fact that, oh, a win would be nice. You know, we need to keep some momentum going. We find ourselves a goal down at the break from their only shot on target. And you know what, Diego? I think I've seen enough, mate. I think I've seen enough. We're going to bring in Cyprian David, and I'm going to move him out to the right-hand side, move Kofi to advance forward. Um, I feel a bit bad for Kofi because he's performed well everywhere I've put him, but I kind of just stick him wherever other players aren't performing, and he kind of just does the job for us. Um, I mean, hopefully he can do the job for us here, although already 15 minutes through this half and absolutely nothing going on which is a little bit of a concern. I want to stay on positive, but I do want us to get a little bit more direct in our play for the next 10 minutes with a view to maybe go more attacking. Kahinde over the corner here, whipped in. Cyprian David is under it, headed clear. Julian plays. Hal Hal hits it. Welcome back, Hal Hal. Been out of the team as I've looked to bed in our new signings, but with the suspension today, he's come in, and with his beautiful little bit of hair, what, what little bit of hair, he has a cool haircut, is what I'm getting at. He scored that. I mean, it's not the most convincing of goals from the centre-back. The keeper's had an absolute Western super there. I was about to make a change, but there's another highlight starting. We've moved up to fourth, everyone. Relax. Relax. It was never in doubt. Could we get another and quick fire? 
Blaze bringing it forward. Tackled hard. Arab now with the ball. Can, can we win back the ball in the high areas of the pitch here? I do like us to press. They've not the ball wide hit to Girard. Zobo on off the bench. Our former man. He has no match sharpness for him. I'm just waiting for him to score now. That's, that's what's going to happen. I'm just waiting for it. Football manager, get. I'm ready for you to hurt me. I'm ready for you to hurt me. Catherine through again. Not like this. Not like this. Thomas tips it over. Only a third shot on target of the game for Red Star. Although they have had the better of the clear-cut chances. They've now got a set piece through Girard. Although, given the fact we just had a clear-cut chance that was saved and went out for a corner, the following corner is usually just a load of rubbish. Um, we're going to go more attacking here. Um, I know Kofi hasn't had the best of games, but Kofi is the kind of player where I feel like I leave him on and he just sometimes he'll come up with a big goal in the big moment. I'm going to take off um, Big Durban. In fact, we're going to bring in, I think, Luis Carlos. Equally, Fomba's been a good bit quiet. So you know what, Saidi, this is your chance to make yourself a hero. 17 years old, definitely one for the future, but good enough to play a role in the first team now. Can he have the big impact on the big stage? I feel like the box-to-box -box midfielder role in our team doesn't always contribute a great deal, so maybe we shouldn't expect it as Blaze runs through. Blaze, what can you do? Puts it wide is what he can do. He can't even find the target. Great run by him, though, through the centre. Red Star looking on the rocks, perhaps there for the taking. Time is just trickling away in this game, and there's part of me that really wants to chase this game. There's part of me that wants to tell the fullbacks, you know what, get further forward, push up. There's also part of me that knows that this sometimes leaves us a little exposed at the back. But you know what, we need to win this kind of game. We should be winning this kind of game. I am willing to gamble. And, uh, well, say I'm willing to gamble. Of course, I've made the tactical changes ten minutes before the game's over, so we're not going to have any more highlights. It finishes 1-1. And I'll tell you what, that is a very, very... It's unfortunate, actually, in some ways, but they did have the better clear-cut chances. But as far as we're concerned, it's a very, very disappointing result. We maintain an unbeaten run, I suppose, but you can see with that result, Dijon... Uh, in fact, Dijon didn't close the gap. Did Dijon draw as well? They did. That's a blessing. Um, you can see, though, Lorient won um, from the looks things. Yeah, they won 1-0 over Sochi. I didn't even realise those two teams were playing each other. So that makes this situation even more close. We've got a team on 47 points, a team on 48, a team on 49. Meanwhile, we currently can't beat the team down in, tw in 14th place on 28 points, which is very, very frustrating indeed, uh, especially at home. We should be winning that game so comfortably. You can see here uh, the Nice boss clearly likes the looks of Kende, Kofi and Blaze. Yeah, could you go away? Go stop, stop stalking our players. It shouldn't be legal. Also, now Mercier is suspended for a game, and Julian Blaze needs a rest. Bless him. He's been doing a lot of running around. And well, the next couple of games are going to be tricky, I think. But looking further ahead, I think next episode we're going to come back for the game against Lorion. They are in third. We should have had a youth intake sometime in March. I haven't talked about the preview for it, but it looks like it could be another very good one. Um, apparently we have a one-winger who looks like a great prospect, a left-back who, who's caught in the eye. Potentially a goal in generation, although we've heard that the last couple of years. And even last season's kind of youth intake wasn't that immense. I would love to have a few great young players. Um, there is a lot of negatives, isn't there, for a golden generation. A lot of positions where we're not getting players. Um, I suppose we'll have to wait and see on that one. Hopefully next episode I'll be coming back with a beaming smile on my face and showing you my new children. That's a weird sentence without any context, isn't it? Anyway, I'm going to end things here, guys. Thank you for watching. I'm sorry that we couldn't get the result against Red Star. Hopefully, we can bounce back, string together a few results. The form is patchy, to say the very least. I would love to try and kick on and get a little bit more consistency into the end of the year. Is that realistic? I mean, at the moment, it doesn't feel like it. I guess you'll have to come back to find out. And, uh, yeah, other than that, I will talk to you guys next time. It is me, Jack. Thank you for watching, as always. And I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.